Okay, we have your two interesting alternative methods sent to me in the comments by Toejang7626. And we have this integral that was sent to me by Sid that I did recently. We have the integral from zero to one, x to the s minus one, cosine ln x dx. And for this one, I didn't really do anything on my own. I got the method in the comments and I got the problem from Sid. But the idea for this is we wanna use the complex method on this and especially for cosine, we can rewrite this using Euler's formula. So starting with Euler's formula, that's gonna be, we have for eix, this is gonna be the same thing as cosine x plus i sine x. And so what we can do is create something with the same base as this x here. So if we have, if we have x to the i, well rewriting the base, rewriting this as e ln x, then I'm gonna get something in this form. So this is gonna be the same thing as like e i ln x. So now using Euler's formula, this is gonna be our input where we had x here we can just plug in a natural log x everywhere. And so doing that, what you have here is this is gonna be cosine ln x plus i sine ln x. And then what we notice is here, we've just created our cosine ln x, which we have right here. And also we just use the fact that for eix, we've created a complex expression in the form of just a plus bi or ib. So if we look at the real part of this, we can just use this notation we want, if we get the real part of xi, that's gonna leave off this part and we just get the cosine ln x. So what we can do is take this and put this back in our integral and this is gonna work well with this base. But when we do this, let's get the real part of the whole thing. So the real part of this whole integral, we'll have our x to the s minus one. And then for our cosine ln x, we're just gonna use this right here. And we're just gonna have x to the i dx. But now at the same base, we can just combine these into one term. So we have our integral, zero to one, and then this is all gonna become x to the s minus one plus i. And we can still just use this here, this is all just a constant value, even though we've got the i. So we can just use power rule on this, evaluate it and finish it off. Okay, so now we'll just go ahead and integrate this thing here. All we need to do is add plus one to the power and that's gonna cancel with this here. So what we're left with is this is gonna become x to the s plus i, but we need to bring that. So we have x to the s plus i over s plus i, and actually, of course, we need to evaluate that from zero to one. Then evaluating at one, what's gonna happen is, it doesn't really matter what the exponent is, it's just gonna be one over s plus i, and then evaluating at zero, that's gonna be zero, so let's just leave that off. But let me leave a little space here because dealing with trying to get the real part when i is in the denominator is not too fun, but we can just rationalize the denominator like this, multiplying by one, then what's gonna happen in the denominator is we're gonna get s squared minus i squared. i squared is minus one, so this becomes s plus one. And then let's split this up into two different fractions. So the first one will have just s, the second one will have the i in the numerator. But then at this point, it's easy to grab the real part because we've got the real part right here. This part's gonna be our imaginary stuff, so we just get rid of that and we bring this back. And so for our solution is we just get S over S squared plus one. Okay, so there you go. Pretty quick and easy, nice example with the complex method. I like that one. Thanks everyone for the suggestion. Thanks to Sid again for the problem. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.